Welcome to Practical 3.2, Capacitive Reactants in AC. Dr. Ken here with you once again. This is our third prac in reactances and the final one for this section. So make sure you do your hazard identification, what supervision level you will need, what is the level of risk, high, low or medium, and then what control measures you can put in place to uh, try and reduce or control those hazards. So here's our basic circuit and I'll just uh, bring up the drawing pen to give you some idea. We're going to be measuring the total current into the circuit using a clip-on ammeter. We'll just be using a voltmeter to measure the total voltage to the circuit. The only thing really in our circuit is a capacitor and we have a 1 ohm resistor. Now the reason for the 1 ohm resistor is that it is a current to voltage transducer. So if I put 1 amp, or if I was to put 1 amp through that resistor I would get 1 volt drop across it. So effectively a 1 ohm resistor converts voltages into current. Having understood that, let's go to our oscilloscope. So our oscilloscope, as we know, is just a flash voltmeter. It's all it is. And on channel one up here, we're simply measuring the voltage across the capacitor. On channel two, we're actually measuring the voltage across the one ohm resistor. So channel one is measuring voltage and effectively channel two via our 1 ohm resistor is measuring current. So channel 2 is current. Nice and simple. Our power supply for this activity is 27 volts AC. We're using a 10 microfarad capacitor and we've got a 1 ohm resistor as our current transducer in the circuit. So here's our basic setup. Again uh, it's a fair bit here, so I'll just go quickly through it with you. Um, we have a voltmeter across the supply, measuring the voltage. Here's our um, clip-on ammeter, measuring the current. And our oscilloscope here, measuring volts on this channel and current on this channel. Uh, the way we're connected up is from our supply loop up through the clip-on ammeter to the capacitor, through the capacitor, out on the blue wire down the bottom down here, now through our one ohm resistor here, then on the white wire back to the common or the zero volts on our AC supply. Channel one the, uh, is here connected to here, I'll just quickly draw it here, there's channel one and channel 2 is here. There's channel 2. And of course, all of that is across our capacitor here in the center. So on our oscilloscope, we will be measuring channel 1 is the voltage. So this yellow one is the voltage. And the blue is the current. Unfortunately, the quality of my capacitor is not real great and we're getting a bit of interference. So we can, you know, kind of average that out. It's okay for the purposes. And that's what we're doing. So there's our basic circuit, how it's connected and uh, what we'll be measuring. So let's now look at some of those values. So the first thing we need to look in our putting our table is the current, and you can see here on the clip-on ammeter quite clearly it's at 100 milliamps. So we've got 100 milliamps coming in the supply, and on the multimeter, of course, we've got close, close enough to 28 volts. Now, if you look closely at the uh, oscilloscope now. Uh, the time base per division is on 2 milliseconds, so 
this is reading uh, two milliseconds. So the next thing we need to know is uh, what is the difference between the two waves. So the blue wave is basically crossing the horizontal there. The red one's crossing the horizontal there. So that's the time difference. So that time difference is 2.5 divisions, which means if I've got 2.5 divisions at 2 milliseconds to division, I've got 5 milliseconds different. So the difference between the two waves is effectively 5 milliseconds on my oscilloscope. The next thing we need to know is uh, what's the period. So let's pick the, um, the yellow wave because it's nice and easy to see. So it starts here and it ends here. So that is the period of the wave. Doesn't matter whether you use the yellow one or the blue one, you get the same answer. So that's 10 divisions. And if I take 10 divisions and I multiply them by two milliseconds of division, I end up with a total period of 20 milliseconds. So I've got 20 milliseconds for my total. So we now want to know what what proportion our 5 is of our 20. And then we want to multiply that by 360 to get degrees. So if we take our 5 milliseconds, divide it by 20, and multiply it by 360, there is a difference in angle of 90 degrees. So we have a difference of... 2.5 milliseconds, which equates to 90 degree angle difference. And you'll notice that the blue wave, the current, is rising before the voltage, which is the yellow one. So it's 90 degrees lead. So 90 degrees lead So if we're going to draw that as a Phaser diagram it would simply like look like this the voltage would be on the horizontal at uh, 28 degrees the voltage across the capacitor and our current is going to be at 90 degrees lead and we draw it at 90 degrees because 90 degrees is a right angle and we end up with this right angle in here which of course is our 90 degrees so that's the phaser representation so let's summarize the results um, we started with a capacitor of 10 microfarads and it's the only reactants in the circuit 10 microfarads. If I use the formula for capacitive reactants, which is 1 on 2 pi Fc up here, I get a capacitive reactance of 318 ohms. If I take my AC values, I know that I was pulling 100 milliamps, if you remember, and 28 volts in my circuit. And I take the uh, voltage and divide it by the current, so that's 28 volts, divided by 100 milliamps, I get 280 ohms. So again, you can see both the impedance of the circuit and the reactance of the circuit are very similar. Now, they're not identical here, probably because of the inaccuracy of the uh, multimeter I was using. It will be, you know, kind of plus or minus a couple of percent. Um, the one ohm resistor that I used as a um, current to voltage to current transducer, that too will add a little bit of inaccuracy to the circuit. But 318 ohms is close to 300, and 280 is close to 300. So, you know, approximately 300 ohms for the circuit. 
So our calculated reactants and our measured impedance are very, very similar.